So we are here live at Ocon 5 2019 here in Council Bluffs, Iowa at the Mid-America Center. We're in the Project Nerd Pavilion, and we are here with Tosca, Tosca. 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 <laughs> Lee, I, you've told me twice. I'm just, That's okay. I'm a terrible human. I'm That's sorry. That's okay. Um, you sound very Italian when you say it that way. Tosca. Tosca. Italian. Tosca Lee. Anyway. That's right. Uh, I'm so, not Italian, just so you know. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I'm not either. Uh, so, so we're here. We're talking about uh, some new books that you have released mm-hmm. this year. Yes. Tell us so, about it. The Line Between came out in January. It's an, it's an apocalyptic, pandemic, run-for-your-life thriller. It's set here in the Midwest. So it's set between Iowa and uh, Nebraska. Mm-hmm. It's the story of a young woman named Winter Roth who has just been ousted from a doomsday cult. And she's trying to start over and make her way in this outside secular world that she's been taught to consider as evil. Mm -hmm. And as she's just starting to get acclimated, this pandemic comes down from the Pacific Northwest and starts causing havoc. Oh, wow. Okay, so uh, we were talking before the interview how I feel like there's not enough of these sort of dystopian, like, post-apocalyptic novels that take place in the Midwest. No, there's because, not. Because, honestly, it's, like, the best place to be it is. when that happens. Yeah. Um, so, like, my wife and I always joke because, you know, her folks, they live out in way rural Nebraska, right. middle of nowhere. Yep. Like, zombie apocalypse happened? That's where we're going. So, the sequel is coming out in September, and I'd say 85% of it takes place in western rural Nebraska. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so... We must be thinking along the same lines. Yeah. Here, so. Uh, so are you from around here? You... I Yes, I am. I, I live in Nebraska, uh, and I grew up here. So. Oh, you grew up in Omaha, I'm guessing? And, uh, well, I grew up in Lincoln. Okay. I live in the Fremont area because I'm married to a farmer. So. Oh, lucky you. Yes, and I've got a son who's a champion trap shooter, and literally every single time I go to one of his meets, I'm like, you know what? We're going to be okay when the zombie apocalypse happens. Exactly. Because... We can pick them off as they come up <laughs> over the horizon. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, I, I grew up in this area too. And uh, if you are a Nebraskan author, mm-hmm. you probably know, and I, I'm assuming here, mm-hmm. that Willa Cather of grew course. up in Nebraska. Of course. Uh, and I lived in Red Cloud, Nebraska you did? for like okay. two years. All right. Uh, don't recommend it. But uh, I felt very like. I kind of felt that, like, because I'm a writer too. So I was like, okay. There's like, a heritage here in yeah. Nebraska of of writing and authors, and I uh-huh. think, I don't know, I kind of think that's how some of the early settlers got through those tough winters. Maybe I mean, yeah. how they stayed sane or not sane. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Uh, so w- we have a theme over here at the Project Nerd Booth. Uh, we're going to talk about food. I and love talking about food. Awesome. I'm all uh, about how it. How do you like your steak? <laughs> Medium rare. Perfect. That is the correct answer. Uh, what is? Look, f- we're living in Nebraska. They kick you out if right. you like cook it more than that. Right. So, like yesterday, we had uh, Steve Bloom and Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who are voice actors over here, and they're they live in California, so okay. they were very impressed with our Midwestern steaks. Oh, well, so that's why as that, they that should came up. Be. Uh, right. So I was just curious. What's your favorite side dish to have with a steak? Baked potato with F- everything loaded of course loaded yes this is good this is, is there any other way i mean uh, yeah no. apparently no. and i don't get it well yeah. oh, uh, over at the casino yeah. restaurant i don't buy that yeah uh all right uh so again i, I mentioned that i like asking weird questions yep. uh, what's the grossest thing you've ever smelled <laughs> have you ever heard of durian no i have not it's this fruit that is so bad smelling in southeast asia that it's banned from hotels Really? Yeah, it's a, it's one of the only. Remember that guy did um, the food show, uh, Zimmer? No, what's the guy who did the weird food? The weird food show. Okay, it's I know the what only you're food about. I've seen him like gag when he was. And wow. this guy eats bugs, right? But he tried durian and he gagged. And so that's the grossest thing you've ever smelled. Yeah. Oh boy, I kind of I'm curious now. Like you need to. It's yes, yes. Oh that's boy, it. I'm so curious. Like it's a I'm fruit. Gonna, it smells like rotting. I'm gonna travel flesh. the world and try and and figure that out. Bizarre. Yes, thank you. Bizarre yes. foods, right? Or bizarre bites, or okay. Yes. Okay. All right. What I'm, he said. I'm curious. <laughs> um, all right. If you had to choose between, this is one of my favorite questions of all time. Oh, if no. you had to choose between fighting one uh, horse-sized duck. <laughs> or a hundred duck-sized horses, which would you fight? I'd fight a hundred duck-sized horses. Okay. 
because I I'm good at kicking. All right, so you can just <laughs> you know get get rid of him that way. Yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah. what about the main character of your book? Which one would she choose? Um, probably the the hundred duck sized horses. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the main character of your book, you know, I I know. A lot of authors will mm-hmm. uh, base it on themselves a little bit because it's easier that way. Did you do that with your main character? I did not. Uh, so th- my main character's uh, 22, so less than half my age. Um, well, you were 22 <laughs> once. I was 22 once. Like last year. Right, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I did give her OCD, which I have. So, really? Okay. Yeah, because I feel like that's important to yeah. to address in fiction because there's a lot of people who are dealing with things and who feel like they they are alone and yeah. so um she she's like me in that way yeah and especially you know when you have something like a, a mental health condition or a disability you know those aren't represented in fiction because i think a lot of authors think well nobody wants to read about that right but, but people do yes there are people who experience that every day in real life and want to know yeah. that you know i'm not doomed in a post-apocalypse <laughs> because this character can that's do it. right if she can make it so can i right that's, that's right. awesome i love that <laughs> Thank and I you. love, you know, trying to be uh, inclusive of that in, in fiction because, you. you know, I think too, too many people take, take the easy way and say, oh, we want to hear about, you know, either like able-bodied, you know, good at everything, this character because yeah. she's great and awesome and cool yeah. and everyone wants to be her. Yep. But not, not everybody can, can live up to that and, yep. and, and then you give that, here's this person that you can relate to. Right. And you Who can still live. kicks ass. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So and you can is. And you can live vicariously through that character yes. and see that, yes, this is a person like me who does this. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah, thank um, you. What authors inspired you the most to start writing? Oh, gosh. There's so many. When I was growing up, I was reading stuff like Lord Valentine's Castle. I don't know if you guys would know about this. This is quite a while ago. I was reading uh, The Mists of Avalon. That was Marion Zimmer Bradley. I love Anne Rice. I love Anne Lamott. Um, there's a lot. I I read Clan of the Cave Bear growing up, and my first novel was compared to Clan of the Cave Bear. So after they told me how terrible it was, the the editor said it is kind of like that. So that <laughs> kept me going for a while. <laughs> it's horrible, but it's kind of like this. Yeah, really, so that, it, that. it was like that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't say I've ever tried to write a novel or anything, so I, I can't even relate to the, the scope that that is. But it, so you, the first new series came out in January. Was that the first book you've ever written? Or? No, it was my 10th. Okay. 10th okay published novel and then awesome. i've got a few that are not published and a few that are not published yet so and uh, i'm sure there's probably a couple in there that will never be published that's, if you have anything to they're say about in the it. basement with the skeletons yeah <laughs> perfect yep. <laughs> yeah that's i i'm i'm much that type of writer like i'll write something and be like this is great and then like next week i read it and i'm like uh, this is garbage and i never want to look at it again yeah uh, so I, I, I think too. a lot of writers are like that. Yes, like, every day. And and that that's how you push yourself to get better, though. Yes, every it's, day it's like you know delusions of grandeur and then paranoia. Yeah, it, it, there's no you in between. Sh- it's, it's here or there. Money, yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> let's see, what other weird question can I ask? Bacon. Um, oh no, sorry. <laughs> oh, bacon. Uh, <laughs> um, that's that's always a great answer to any yeah. question. Mm-hmm. If you could be any mythological creature, what would you be? Centaur. Sent that you took no time to think about I that. Know, I know like I don't that. know why that took no time, but I just knew. <laughs> <laughs> like centaur. you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know, maybe a dragon <laughs> or like a unicorn. No, centaur. Centaur. Just no thought. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um. All right. What? Uh, what would you be? What would I be? Yeah. I feel like I would be like a Sasquatch. <laughs> Because, like, I basically already live that way. And like, then people would be like, I think I saw him. Right. And that's kind of, like, every, people come up to me like, do I know you? And I'm like, no, Not as don't. far as you know. And, like, mm-hmm. I barely leave my house. I'm hairy. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I think it would just be a natural yep. transition for me. Okay. Um, what's your favorite breakfast food? <laughs> Eggs. <laughs> Eggs. That's a great answer, too. I don't like cold breakfast. That's not breakfast to me. It has to be warm. Yeah. Has to have eggs. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, my doctor said I'm not supposed to eat too many more eggs. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I know I'm under 30 and have no, high cholesterol, no. so you know, gotta avoid that. Yeah. That's a peek into my personal problems, everybody. Uh. Right? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's not talk about that, Dale. That's, <laughs> That's not a important. lot of eggs. It it, it was. <laughs> uh, you know, every weekend at Denny's after a drunken weekend, you know, mm. you don't want to do that. Um, okay, so let's see. We've talked breakfast. We've talked steak. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your favorite uh, 
Like sandwich. Chicken salad on a croissant. Chicken salad on I a like croissant. I crave a good chicken salad on a croissant. Sometimes a savory chicken salad with a little green onion. Sometimes yeah. sweet with some sliced almonds in there. I'm very specific about like my that. chicken salad. I like that. I like I like food. I think a lot about food. I plan my <laughs> entire day around food. I kind of do too. Oh, and a good grilled cheese. Ooh. A good grilled cheese with thinly sliced tomato and a little avocado in there, and then a really nice tomato soup that you can dip it in. Oh my god! You have is, to dip it. This is great. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. I. Um, my wife does. Is, she's not a foodie. Like she just eats whatever's around, and like that drives me nuts because <laughs> I'm, I'm like, hey, what do you want for dinner tonight? She's like, ah. Uh, chicken. No, you have to have something like, to live for. Well, and I was like, okay, like what kind of chicken? How do you want me to cook it? What do you want to have with it? Like what? <laughs> what are we doing? And and she just doesn't get it. And I'm just like, <laughs> I can't live no, like this. No, that's good because then you can make whatever you want to make. Exactly. Yeah. And then she just eats it and is like, yep, it's good, whatever. And yep. it's like, but you're not enjoying life. <laughs> like, you, why? That's, How do you live like this? That's but that explains also why my doctor said I shouldn't eat eggs. Uh, <laughs> Anything? Where where can people find you online or mm-hmm. find your books and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, you can find my books on any place: Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, all those places. You can go online to Walmart and Target and all that stuff. Uh, you can find me at toscalee.com. So it's just T O S C A L E E dot com. I'm on Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and all that stuff. And you can see my little kitties. We have rescue kitties, and we've got a giant. 140 pound German Shepherd, and Are you can see all, all that. On your Instagram? All on Instagram. I'm going to be there in like 10 seconds because <laughs> I want to see pictures of that dog. <laughs> um, and food. There's food too. Oh, thank yeah. God. Okay. Uh, all right. So, anything else you want to plug or tell people about? Or did you? I don't remember if you told us the title of your books. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So it's called The Line Between. It okay, came out yeah, in you did January. Say the, first one. the sequel is A Single Light. A single so, light. they take place here. Uh, they are in development for TV, so really, really excited about that. Yeah. Uh, do do we have a network that you can announce Not for that yet? yet. Okay. Uh, two of my other books have uh, been in development, and they are with CBS okay. right now. So that's, that's exciting awesome. stuff. Yeah. So I can tell you that. Look but, at that. Uh, Homegrown television <laughs> right here in in Nebraska and Iowa. It's great. Yay. Um, yeah. Let me think if there's anything we need to close on. Any, uh, Ooh, yeah. um, I've got a couple cool things in the works that I'm uh, proposing right now, and I'm really excited about them. Not talking about them very much, but um, really cool. Oh, also, next week, we're going to have a thing. So when I wrote the line between, I buried a code in the book, just because when you're writing at four in the morning, you do stuff like that, right? <laughs> of course. So, we are going to have a landing page where people who read the book can go and they can enter the code if they think they've found it. And then you have to say what you think it means. And if you get it right, you can start reading the second book before it even comes out. That so is it's really cool. Very cool. It's very cool. Where's so, Tyler? Tyler needs to hear about that. Yes. I, I plant Easter eggs in all my books, actually. That, so back in the day. Because she loves eggs. Well, yes. But back in the day, I wrote for Smart Computing. That's how I got my writing start, was writing really? for a computer magazine. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, were they like, I like to imagine that you just wrote like fiction about computers taking over the world <laughs> to please no, the computer overlords no. of the magazine? Okay. Well, you know, I wrote computer <laughs> stuff. But I, you know, I got to interview all the cool people who wrote like the who did the games like Mist. I don't know if you ever yeah. knew about Mist and, yeah. and all that. So that's, that's how I started. Cool. That's super mm-hmm. cool. I'm I, a legit uh, nerd. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah. I got my start here. So awesome. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And publish me anytime now. Just saying. No. All right. Well, this has uh, been Tosca Lee here uh, <laughs> uh, with us. Talk about her books. Check them out. Find her online. Check out all her cool stuff. We're here at the Project Nerd Pavilion. Ocon version 5.0 live hanging out. Come stop by. You got a booth here, I imagine. I do. Are you signing books there? I am. I'm right. It's A1. Booth A1. It's easy to find. Right, it's right, right at the in front. There. So. so if you're here... You should go to her booth and get her to sign books because she's going to be a famous TV writer here soon. Because <laughs> I have a pen. What, what well, that we? too. <laughs> I'll sign her books too. <laughs> you can come sign my books too. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Ocon. Thanks. Thanks.